Hello. Let me tell you something tonight about soft body physics I'm trying to do here in Unity. Some soft body physics using just the stuff in Unity. And I kind of figured out that a spring joint is something that, you know, would make something look squishy. So I kind of put these two meshes I made in Blender with bones in the places where these letters are. And this one is like uh, bones in the shape of cube, and this one is bones uh, kind of like in the shape of like a, you know, a T. And let's see how they look with spring action on them and see if this is like soft enough. <laughs> so um, these lines here are showing the way I connected the bones. So here in the sphere, the bones are connected in a cross-like pattern, see? And... If I get really close here, you can see the the different bones have colliders on them. And yeah, see they're reacting because they're all connected to the root. All these edges are connected to the root. So that's what the sphere looks like. And then the cube that I made, this is what it's looking like from the bones that were connecting it together. Um, let's see, if I move the cube around, let me just turn on the movement script for the cube and go to game window. If I move the cube around, you know, it kind of jiggles. The thing is, is since I guess I got I got two bones in there, you know, like it jiggles. But sometimes when it gets close together, it, it yeah, it looks messed up, kind of like an octopus or something. But it's kind of holding together. And that's the um, cube. If I move the sphere around with its um, connecting springs, it looks like this. Uh, la la. Let's see. I could go like this. It's just that that bottom point is always there like one point, and I could jump up and land, oop, I landed really hard there. But, so this is like me doing soft body physics just using springs and, you know, an armature mesh, like the bones or what I'm, you know, since they would uh, make the mesh move. So, you know, I don't know. That's what I did. But how did I do this? Well, it would be kind of hard for me to like be adding all the springs and everything. So here for the sphere, this is armature and it already had these, um, it was already rigged with these bones. So then for, instead of adding everything on each of the bones, I kind of did it with a script. So for the bone sphere, I made this script and I'll show you the script over here. So first you get to tell the script what all the, bo the bones are for this um, sphere. And then um, you get to say how strong the spring is gonna be, how strong the damper is gonna be on the spring. So the stronger the spring, the less it's gonna like actually jiggle and bounce. And the higher the value for the damper, the more the spring is going to stop shaking faster. Uh, then, you know, I played around with either having the colliders for that I put on these objects to be a sphere or a box. Okay, see here? And, you know, I just told a prefab line to you so I could, like, kind of get a sketch of the way the bones were connecting. So I got those values. And then, just to make things simple, I have a soft body script that I wrote. It's a static um, C-sharp class. So I just use softbody.init. And for the init, I'm just knitting the shape I'm going to use for the soft body um, spring stuff, the size of the colliders, the rigid body mass, the spring strength damper, and if I'm going to if I'm going to freeze the um, any put any constraints on the colliders and the prefab line, and if I'm going to view lines or not. And then this way, instead of me actually manually putting all the springs on here inside uh, the editor, it's, it was easier for me to just quickly get up some models and get them all hooked up with the springs by just doing it by script. So first over here, I just add a collider at each of the bones, right? And then I kind of put a spring between two bones. So all the springs that I'm adding are from like, you know, like I said, from these outer points here on the sphere to the middle. And that's what this does. So this is a script that just easily sets up the, the thing for me. And the soft body script it is over here. Let's go to the definition of that. Yeah, so here's my soft body script, you know. So it's a static class. So I don't have to like instantiate it. I can just use the methods. Here's where I define the two enums for the shapes that you know, I could use in my springy soft body thing. These are the um, variables. They're public, but here in the init's, it's like a one call to set the variables. Okay, and there's two overloads for the init. One that is going to assume you're not going to draw those lines that I show connections, and another one where you assume you are going to show lines. Okay, but you see here in the init's, it just sets those statics, right? And then here's the add collider. So I have like a faster version of the add collider, saying that. If all these values are set, I don't want to have to keep passing them over and over again. So here's one um, override of the add collider. Let me just collapse the definitions. 
Okay, that just takes the game object I want to add a collider to. And in here, it's going to call the, um, the add collider that has all the parameters. And this is just so that in the, in the script, the first script, I don't have to keep passing in all those parameters. I could just pass in the least amount of values since it's going to use the same thing. So um, these that are the short call versions will use the variables above and call the actual add collider function. So here it switches based on the shape to add a box collider or a sphere collider. You can say the size, then the rigid body, and you say the mass, the drag. And I turn on angular drag so that if those colliders hit something, they don't, they don't just go spinning around. I mean, I don't really want them to spin around when they're part of a mesh because then you'll just see the mesh twisting up. So I have angular drag pretty high, and then the constraints, whatever was set. And I return the rigid body, so in case you want to do something with it in the script, I keep going back to here. In case you want to do something with it in the script, uh, you know, you could do something with it. Add collider return the rigid body, and add spring returns the spring joint. So then the add spring function, it is here in the soft body static class. So, you know, here when you add a spring, you have to have the two game objects you want to make a spring between and a spring strength and damper. So here I add, um, I just pick the first game object, I add the spring joint to that, and then I say that the spring joint is connected to the second game object that you passed in. And I set the two values. It's kind of simple. It's just, I did it in a script instead. And then here, the same thing with adding a line. I got the two game objects and the prefab to use for a line, and I just make a line between those two game objects. So it's not that much, you know, I was just trying to use a spring joint, and that's what I did for that, for the, for the uh, bone sphere. And then here with this one, same thing, it's the bone cube. See, and I could just keep using the soft body static class to set up everything. So um, other than these two, these scripts and everything that are just, it's a mesh, it's a skinned mesh with an armature inside of it. Um, how did I make these uh, skin meshes? I just used Blender. So let me go take a look in the Blender here. Let's see, Blender. Okay, and we'll just have general project. So say um, the first one I had, let me just delete the camera and the light. Okay. And the first thing I had, it was a cube, so here's the cube. The only thing is I want it to have more, um, you know, more um, vertices to it so it could actually, you know, bend and jiggle. So I could use modifier right off the back, and I could do subdivision surface. And that one's kind of like a sphere, but, you know, I could just say simple, and I get this. Right, and probably just divide it up a little bit more, bing, 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 you know, get some nice jigglies. And that would be my mesh. Then I would just add bones to it. So let's see, let's look at it straight on. Um, let's make the bottom of the mesh right there. So uh, the mesh is selected, is it? Yeah, yeah. And let me just move it up, G, Z. Let's move it up to there. So the cursor is now down here at the bottom. Instead of this being the center of the mesh, let me just snap the origin to the 3D cursor. And now that orange dot went right here. Now I just want to add uh, the bones to this. So let's see. Add, I'm in object mode, add a single bone right here. And OK, this is at the bottom. Let me move it over to this corner. And then I probably want it to be a little bit smaller, because where the bones position is, it's right here at this corner point, right? So I guess I'll put it like there and let me just shrink it down a little. I had to go into edit mode. All right, G Z. All right, so I'm gonna have bones in each of the corners. There's a bone. Then let me extrude a bone off of that, and then let me just split it so it's on its own. And then now let me move it. There's a bone over here, and remember this is the point that's gonna actually matter. So let me just put that bottom point there like that, and turn the bone around. I have two on this side. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get four corner bones. So here's another one that's going to face down. Let me split it and move it to this corner. Then extrude off another bone, split it. And I'll put it, oops, what's that? What am I doing? And G, move it over here. And let me just flip it around where to switch direction. So these are not on one side or another just yet. Because if you look over here and I see they're just like in the middle. So I could select all those bones and move them to one side. So that would be G, X. OK, so those are on that side. Now, can I do a Control D for duplicate? Can I do a copy, um, duplicate, Shift D? And let me put these. Oh, let's use the X key. Let me then take the bones and attach them to the mesh. Back to object mode, select the mesh, 
Shift, select the bones. Okay, then right click and say parent with automatic weights. Boom, now the bones are connected. That means if I go to pose a bone over here, it should. Uh oh, it's not doing anything to the mesh. What happened? Why isn't that working the way I want it to? All right, let me just control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. So now they're separated again, okay? I select the mesh, I select the armature. I, I think I have my mouse on the armature. I right click and say parent it with automatic weights. Okay, and now armature is the top one. Now let me go to edit mode of the, oops, I'm, I'm gonna go back to object mode, select the armature, pose mode. Now let's see if they're connected. So, okay, now it's connected, you see, because it's moving. All right, so now I could export this. Here, I'm gonna put it here, square. Sorry, that was fun. Hmm, there we go. Oh, let's see, where are all the bones? Let's see, They I didn't really name them there, but that's okay, I'll name them here. I'm just renaming them so when I'm connecting the bones, I know where I'm connecting what to. I think that's B right there. Now I could add, uh, let's use the, I already wrote a script here, so, um, where is it? A bone cube script, so let me just put that there. See now here it's going to want all the letters, so let me just give it to them. A, B, C, D, 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 E, 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 F, uh, G and H. Okay, spring strength, prefab line. All right, give it so I could draw the lines. There you go. So let me put on the letters icons, gizmo, so we can see what letters are what. Let's keep the rotation from happening. Freeze the rotation. All right. Yeah. All right, so now that's better. So let's see, maybe make it a little bit more bouncy. I would just have to decrease the spring strength 300 from 500 and now it should be a little bit more bouncy okay i think i'll have to come up with a better way but that's what i got for it tonight and hope you enjoy it and find some uh, interesting use for it thanks bye you made it to the end of the video i'm so proud of you this is my website the main thing i want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on youtube i have the tutorial section which has the blue links for the projects and the orange links are the files also you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp